If you're expecting a spectacle, you've come to the right place. I'm making Julia Child's Flaming Souffle. Solid tease. Now I gotta deliver. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. So I haven't been in this one in a minute. Julia's, the French chef cookbook. Uh, I got an old copy of the book, so I'm gonna be careful while I open it up to page 123. Rum, orange, and macaroon souffle Flambe, set ablaze. So I have my experience making souffles. It's all very well documented on this channel. I started off, I don't know, lost, a lost man. You ready? Oh my God. I've figured it out. I know what's going on with souffles now, and each time I do it, I get a little better. Check out those buns. <laughs> it looks like an ass. I want a good rise. I want something that's gonna look nice before I uh, set it on fire. And yeah, I have experience with good fire in the kitchen. <laughs> and bad fire in the kitchen. I'm gonna focus on the former. Remove. Here is a souffle, which rises nicely, is slow to sink, and which is baked in a low serving dish. Flame it with hot liqueur if you wish a dramatic presentation. We most certainly do. Let's get to work. All right, this is gonna be my souffle mold today. It's gonna match fairly closely to what Julie is using in her show. She's using something like this, but a little bigger. Nine inches in diameter, two inches deep. That's what I'm looking for. Bingo, bango, bongo. I'm gonna lightly butter it up. This next step is something that she does in her show, but she doesn't mention it in the book. Add some sugar into the inside of this mold and then get that all stuck to the butter. Mold is prepped. Get it off to the side. Don't need to worry about it right now. And one orange. Where's the other one? Shit. I got two oranges here that I need to grate the rind off. Not the big holes here, but the smaller holes here. Just want the orange stuff. None of the white stuff, please. None of that pith. None of the pith. So I'm using the box grater just like this. Uh, that's because um, I saw Julia doing it on the show and she looked like a badass. So I'm like, you know what? I want to look like a badass. 2 -third cup of granulated sugar. I'm gonna use this to mash them together. This is uh, the pestle part of my mortar and pestle. And let's mash the rind together with the sugar. Extract as much of the orange oil as possible. Place six egg yolks in with this orange sugar. And whisk, please. Beat that together until pale and thickened. You have the option between dark rum or orange juice. I got these two oranges right here. It would do the trick. But Julia uses rum in her show. So that's what I'm gonna do in my show. And I need what? Quarter cup worth. Dark rum. She says if you're not using good dark rum, don't use it. Pour a little in, give it a beat, pour the rest in. Set this bowl over barely simmering water and beat with my wire whip till the mixture turns into a warm, thick cream. This could take like three to four minutes. The egg yolk's in here, so you don't want it to cook. Would you like to come closer? I think you would. I'm sorry, just uh, don't stop the whisking. For every second, you want to do two strokes. <laughs> okay. For every second, you want to do two strokes with your whisk. Uh, so one, two. One, two, three, one, two. Thick enough to form the dissolving ribbon. I think it's getting too warm. And Julia takes hers off the heat. She stirs it for a bit. She gets it back onto the heat. She just kind of repeats the process. She says if you dunk your hand and it's warm, it should be good. It is warm, it's not thickened yet. So Julia says three to four minutes, double it. Six to eight minutes and counting. Just not thickening up. Thicken up. Got a pretty half decent ribbon stage going on there. They're back. The vacuumers. 
We miss them. Not really, but you know, kind of. Okay, let's bring a warm welcome for the Silver Fox. Silver Fox, you're not the main character in your movie today, Silver Fox. You're a bit of a supporting character. We're just gonna put you off to the side. Julia always has a stand mixer off to the side. I mean, it's only fair if I'm allowed to film, they're allowed to clean. <laughs> They must know that I'm filming down here, right? Beat this mix here for four to five minutes until it has become cool. Thank you very much. Whoa, that has thickened up very nicely. It's Silver Fox. Thank you. Add in the egg whites from six eggs into a clean bowl. So I gotta whip these egg whites up into stiff peaks and usually this is a job for Silver Fox, but I feel like every attempt I've had this year at whipping up stiff peaks has resulted in over whipped stiff peaks. Past the point of stiff peaks. And I blame myself and Silver Fox because Silver Fox has too much damn power and I don't know when to call it. So I figure if I go back to basics with the granny, I might have better luck. Beat the sifted cornstarch into the egg yolk mixture. Time out. Okay, so that's a good thing I noticed that. Bring the egg yolk mixture over here, sieve me. Thank you. And I have a quarter cup of cornstarch. More than anything on earth, I hate the texture of cornstarch. I really do. I'm glad I'm not in there with it. Cornstarch is mixed into my egg yolk mix. Now I can put that aside and continue where we were. Stiff peaks, please. We've reached the foamy stage, so what I'm gonna do is add in a quarter teaspoon cream of tartar for a little stability. <laughs> I'm gonna add in a pinch of salt. So once we've passed the foamy stage here, let's crank it to high. Okay, so once I have soft peaks, I can add in two tablespoons of sugar. Probably keep the mixer running while you're doing that slick. When you're making souffles, everything needs to be perfect. Soft peaks. Grandma, you did a good job. Uh, I think I prefer using the granny mixer for <laughs> whipping up stiff peaks. It was far more, uh, it's just much more in control this way. These are some nice stiff peaks. I have the oven set to 375F. Check. Is there anything else I need to do before I proceed? What I'm about to do has never dawned on me in the history of this show, but I saw Julia do this on her show, and I'm like, that was genius. Two spatulas. Watch. I take a quarter of my stiff peaks into the egg yolk mix, take this spatula. That's just a really quick meet and greet. Just make sure that both are ready for what's about to happen. I don't want to deflate these egg whites. Usually I'm fairly rough with this kind of stuff. Trying to turn over a new leaf. Gentle folding today. So cut to the bottom with my spatula and then flip it over. You rotate the bowl. Just repeat that a few times until everything is gradually mixed together, but I do not need to overdo it, Jamie. Everything kind of hinges on what I'm doing right now. You're done. I think that looks really nice. Gentle. Lid on it, and Julia says that can keep for around half an hour to up to an hour if you're good. I just keep that off to the side. Gentle! Okay, so I have to be quick with this story because I have the souffle on standby. Uh, but I was today years old when I found out that there are two different things called macaroons. First one I'm very familiar with. It has coconut in it. I've made it before. If you told me to go down to the store to pick up macaroons, that's the one I would find easily. In fact, I did find it today. Okay, well, there's a second one called macaroons, and it is an almond flavored cookie. And when I was watching Julia make this on her show today, uh, she was using this cookie, and I was like, that's not a macaroon. Well, she said it was, so I looked it up, and it is. I don't know why there's two things called macaroons, but that is the world we live in, and uh, we're all just along for the ride. Also, there's macarons, so don't be confused with all these things. French macaroon cookies. You know, made out of egg whites and almond flour. 
Well, these are actually called Italian Amaretti cookies, and I had these left over from my ravioli video, uh, but they are essentially the same thing, so I figure I can just use these instead of going on a massive manhunt for the macaroon cookies I didn't know existed about a few hours ago. Anyway, let's move on. I got lots to do, so I should probably just shut my app and keep moving forward. Three quarter cup of crumbled macaroon cookies. And I don't need to do too finely a job here. It can be fairly coarse. So now it's time for the souffle mold and aren't we happy we prepped that in advance. Turn one third of the souffle mixture into the buttered dish. Sprinkle in half of three quarter cup of macaroons on top of this souffle mix. Add in more souffle mix. Kind of a full house here, but let's just keep the momentum going. The remaining cookies. And then she says the rest of the souffle mix, but honestly, I have a hell of a lot extra, so I'm not gonna use all of it. Honestly, I think I filled this up too much. I mean, my souffle mold is approximately the same size as what she recommends in the book, but I have plenty of leftover here. And uh, this is already like over the top. Ow. I say we risk it and go for it and see how much of a rise we can get out of this. Son of a gun. 375 degrees, middle rack for 25 minutes. Gentle, gentle. So anytime I'm making a souffle, this is when things get kind of nuts because I'm like trying to film the rise in the oven, but also I need to multitask. I have 25 minutes to make a creme anglaise sauce, a French custard sauce. And uh, yeah, I gotta focus on that. Simultaneously, I have to make sure everything is clean for when the souffle comes out of the oven and I light that sucker on fire. The egg yolks from three eggs. Whisk until thick and sticky, around one minute. Little souffle update right now. It is rising, I hope it rises a little more. I wish I could show you, I will after this creme anglaise is done. Uh, but just trust the process, because I think and those final few minutes is when that rise is really gonna push its way through. Okay, so I gradually added one third cup of sugar and one and a quarter cup of milk here. I need to, by the droplets, switch hands, beat this in. By the droplets. You got an itch on your nose? Itch it, but just proceed back to what you're doing. You're wondering why I'm doing this right now while the souffle is in the oven and not like well in advance, it's because this is what Julia did on her show. It seemed like a good idea, and now that I'm doing it, it's still a good idea. I'm making it work. Onto a moderately low heat. And what we're gonna do is switch your weapon over to a wooden spoon. Spill some on the stove too, that's cool. Hi, can you see me here? Uh, so do not let the sauce come anywhere near a simmer. If you do, well don't. And also, uh, I need to keep stirring this until it can coat the back of this spoon. So we have a total of seven and a half minutes until that souffle comes out of the oven. And we gotta make sure that everything is ready. How's that creme anglaise? So what I'm doing right now is heating up one third cup of brandy. So let's just make that warm. Two teaspoons of the vanilla extract into the creme anglaise. Now in the show, Julia says, you know, since we're using rum all day, why don't you switch over to the orange liqueur? So I need a tablespoon of just that into my creme anglaise. Creme anglaise can coat the back of a spoon. We're good. It is now time to remove the souffle from the oven. Uh, Whoa. If you wish to flame the souffle 100%, pour the warm brandy over it just as you enter the dining room. Order up. It's not happening. Order up. That's so fed up. Order up. Okay, okay, okay. Order up. Order up. I don't know what to say right now. I'm not too thrilled with my Flaming Souffle's performance there. I'm just kind of pulling an audible. I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but this is the only way I can salvage this video. So I filled up two ramekins, and now I sprinkle a little powdered sugar on top. Take a thumb, guide it around the 
rim of the ramekin, and that's gonna promote rising in this souffle. This is gonna go in for, I don't know, like 15 minutes or something? I don't know, I'll keep my eye on it. Okay, while those are in the oven, back to this one. I'm gonna cut myself a slice. Can't tell you how miffed at myself I am about filling the mold up with that much souffle mix. Like, I should have just kept it, you know, like a quarter inch underneath the rim. Ah, that's hot. Uh, but I didn't, and I knew better. Now, that being said, the rise would have been just fine if I could have set this thing on fire, but... Bup kiss. Some creme anglaise on top. At least that's nice. Okay, they didn't rise. I'm fully aware of that. It's just because that mix was hanging out on the counter for way too long that... I missed the opportunity. Never mind that, I have proven in the past that I can get a souffle to rise. This is all about the flaming part. I was able to light the souffle on fire, uh, but I poured too much booze on top of these things and it soaked it. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know how I'm gonna make a video out of this. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I want a dramatic presentation of this flaming souffle. And I want it by the end of this evening. On my desk. So let's get ready. Bowl me. Orange me. Thank you. And uh, yeah, resume the position. So we've seen everything that I'm about to do. You know, it's just a repeat of it, but I'm gonna have the recipe because uh, I don't need as much souffle mix, I found, because this isn't as big as whatever Julie is using. So, how about a powerful montage? Get us through to the, the point of molding. So I'll see you there. offense to you lovely people, but I work a lot better when I'm not talking. Uh, that's all mixed together and I'm gonna act <laughs> super fast right now. Ooh, look, cookies. I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna move it around the edge to kind of clear up some space there between the souffle mix. Okay, I forgot this part last time, but I'm just gonna sieve some powdered sugar on the very top. Just a very thin layer of it. Gentle, 25 minutes. All I had to do this time around is add a tablespoon of softened butter into the creme anglaise, and uh, it looks uh, phenomenal. I didn't do that the first time around. I forgot, but you know, it happens. Coats the back of a spoon, no problem. It is time. Order up. Uh, that was the flaming souffle. What do you think? Yeah, me neither. Whoa! <laughs> wow. <coughs> the souffle uh, absorbs all the booze like a sponge. You can taste every last drop in there. I don't know how much I've had to drink tonight, but like one third cup of warmed brandy on top. In the souffle base, there is half of a quarter cup of rum, tablespoon of orange liqueur in the creme anglaise. Not to mention I had a huge slice of the failed souffle earlier. So needless to say, I'm having a great time. I'm having a great time. Uh, did I like my dessert? No. 
In fact, I did not like it at all. I don't mind a warmed glass of brandy from time to time. Uh, I don't know, having the whole dessert soaked in it is a whole other thing altogether. At the end of the day, was the flaming part even that exciting? I don't know. Could you see it? I don't know. YouTube videos, man. What do you do with them? You know, making a souffle is challenging enough. And, you know, it's not even really worth it at the end. I mean, if, unless you're a souffle junkie, uh, you know, it's far more trouble than it's worth. So, you know, getting that far is already the accomplishment. Pouring flaming hot brandy on top of the thing, it's just, it's just, you know, ultimately it came down to uh, an orange flavored, warm soaking sponge that tasted like brandy and moonshine. So if that's your thing, you're gonna love it. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. <laughs> this souffle was far worse than the one earlier, the failed one. I don't know, maybe I went a bit overboard with the booze on top, but I thought it was necessary because we were making a flaming souffle. There is a difference in quality between a flaming souffle and a flaming crepe Suzette. The Suzette, Suze, is one of the best desserts I've ever had. I think it's one of the best desserts I've ever had. The flaming souffle, throw it to the dogs. Actually, don't give it to the dogs. That's not a good idea. We'll keel over.